First quarter, 1989 final of the Foster's Cup. Melbourne kicking towards the left. That's known in, uh, well, cricket terminology. They call it the Vauxhall end. I think the wind is basically blowing across the ground. It's going to be a free kick to Steve Newport. Let's see what sort of an effect he'll have on the ball with the breeze. Players totally misjudging that one, and it beats Ricky Jackson over the line for a throw-in. Something that's got to be considered here, Peter, is the state of the ground. Now, the bare patches, there's a little bit of moss or lichen coming through, coming through, so the ball is slipping through there, but on the grass areas, it's tr bouncing truly. Chance down there for Melbourne. The hand pass came out uh, from Jay Biney. And the Bombers, well, they served it right up to Hawthorne over at the Joe Robbie Stadium. And they'll be very keen to do well here. Off the ground from O'Donnell and the ball once again out of bounds. And it'll be thrown back into play. Danny Seo, as Don mentioned, had that ankle problem. Actually, he was on crutches for a couple of days after the game in Toronto. Steins and Somerville, one by Somerville. Now Steins tries to get clear, can't do so. Good tackle applied, likewise from Newport. And the ball beats Werner over the boundary line for another throw in. And this ground, in many respects, resembles the old Arden Street ground purely and simply by virtue it has a gasometer right on the wing. The only difference we don't have Stoko Motors underneath it. Jimmy Steins will get a free kick. Steins at right centre wing for Melbourne. Very, very wide ground and an easy mark down there on the left half back flank taken by Kevin Walsh. Walsh gets the hand pass across to Antrobus. Antrobus to Underwood. Back it goes looking for Antrobus again but it was Wallace giving it to Tony Antrobus and his left foot kick is a little ordinary. Collected by Steins. A kick across his body into the centre. Madden flies high, can't mark. Underwood dives on the football. Walsh, strong play by Kevin Walsh. Punched on by Madden towards centre half forward. Antrobus gets the ball out, but here's a chance now for Beveridge for Melbourne to put the Demons up towards centre half forward. Melbourne kicking against the breeze. Jackson, a kick over the top, and there's a mark to Melbourne taken by Bennett, only 15 metres from goal directly in front. Well, Ricky Jackson, very lucky on that occasion because he was playing behind and luck being a fortune, it bounced in his hands and he quickly seized his opportunity and got it across to Darren Bennett. Good play by Jackson and Bennett shoots for goal and the first score on the board is a goal to the Demons. Well, they need that big fellow firing up at that full forward position, Darren Bennett. And when he fires, they've at least got a focal point. He's big, he's strong, he's able to take a good mark on that occasion, getting away from Paul Hamilton. Yes, and then full back and uh, took that easy chess mark. Well done by Ricky Jackson. Should have been in front initially, but it had enough composure to spot Bennett in a short pass and well finished off. So back into the centre. First score coming up to Melbourne. Madden loses that one out to Steins. Is that a free kick for in the back? One would think that it just about could be. And the free kick going Essendon's way, it'll be taken by Grenbold. So the Bombers to swing into attack for virtually the first time in the game. And players like we saw in Toronto misjudging the flight of the ball. It'll take them a little while to adjust to the conditions here. Of course, Melbourne coming from indoor conditions in Toronto. And a little bit of a box on. Conley serves it up. Steins comes in. Buick, is this going to be a repetition of 87? It was on the cards, Peter, something like this happening. I think both of these sides are pretty keyed up and they both want to win. Players coming from everywhere. There's only about 12 not in it, 8 not in it. There's 3, 2, Eston and 1 Melbourne just about to arrive on the scene. There's only 8 players on the ground not in this dust-up. Well, and Schwab laid down the law the other night. Reports, of course, can be made. I don't think the book came out there. That's how it started. It's a free kick to Bailey, actually, on that boundary line. Just up from the back pocket. No one's standing on the mark. Now Buick comes in to do that. Interesting to see the emergency umpire, John Russo, t talking to Somerville. Maybe Somerville had his number taken. We'll find out later on. Sounds for the Demons through the agency of Graham. Not a long kick. Hooks it back. Johnston got a fist to it. Comes through pretty strongly. Likewise, Manning, a nice balk. Pick, uh, affects the hand pass to O'Donnell. And he chips it down short. And the mark is taken by Spawn. That could almost be 50 metres as he was met solidly by Bailey. From inside the square, tries for the torpedo punt, didn't really get onto it. Well, just about a mark down there to, I think it's Marnie, yes it is. And he did so very well in Toronto when he put Stoneham virtually out of business, especially in the first two quarters. 
I believe his nickname is Rocky, is it uh, Don at Melbourne? Well, you know why, after that little altercation, he certainly can handle himself, Rocky. Oof, it was uh, almost a little bit higher, the umpire lets play to continue. Terry Danaher comes out with the ball, hooks the ball across his body, down towards half forward. Players trying to come to grips with it, Newport gets it up to Sean White and he clears for Melbourne. White's kick, looking for Turner, the ball rebounds towards Graham, Graham goes in hard, backs himself, the ball comes wide to Newport, Newport the defensive side of the centre, kicks it towards centre half forward, Jackson in front can't mark, Underwood tries to tap it on, Johnson there for Essendon, but good play by Jackson, the hand pass over the top, another chance for Melbourne, Todd Viney tries to crash his way through, desperate stuff by O'Donnell and the Bomber defence working overtime, they clear the ball wide to halfback. That ball's really hard to handle, and the way it's shooting off this turf, the players are putting their bodies behind, but it's coming to them rather quickly, whereas back home in Melbourne, the ball will stop uh, dead because of the heavier surface. Now, we've just gone through a summer here in England, and uh, although there is rain there, underneath this ground, it is very hard. The surface very slippery. I have to repeat that the wind is very, very awkward at the moment. Here's an opportunity for Jay Viney gets the hand pass to Beveridge. Beveridge's kick is high in the Walsh direction. He knocks it away from Turner, backing up nicely and taking the crumbs as Antrobus. The hand pass is smothered well. Demon forwards working hard at their half forward area. Walsh crashed to the ground. Opportunity there for Keogh. He's crashed and he's going to be rewarded for his efforts with a free kick. He's about 45 metres from goal. This is Rod Keogh, the nephew of Trevor Keogh, who played 200 games with Carlton and this man is carving a niche for himself in football, a promising player. Rod Keogh from 45 metres. The left foot kick, holding up in the breeze, right on the goal line, it's touched, and it's through for a behind to Melbourne. So Melbourne doing the scoring here in the opening minutes of the first quarter. They're 1-1-7, Essendon yet to score. Well, both teams certainly going at this, and it's good to see they're giving the spectators value for money. Not the best. Not the best of kick-ins. The ball comes up towards the half-back line, and that could be a high tackle applied by Keogh. And the umpire, well, Keogh is certainly looking for a free kick, but it's going to go to Manning. Manning at the right half-back flank for Essendon. Kick to centre wing, thumped away by Steins. Very close to the boundary line, and indeed it's tapped over for Melbourne by Graham, and once again in front of our camera position, we will see a boundary throw in. Very, very wide area of the oval. I would have ventured to suggest it would be as big as VFL Park, certainly. It's approaching those proportions. Now the umpires found a free kick, just as Melbourne through Matthew Phoebe were breaking clear. Gee, they were stiff, Pete. They were away there. Antrobus will take the free kick at right centre wing. The angry ant, as he's noted, Windy Hill. Marnie getting up pretty high. Somebody's lost a boot. It was Darren Buick. Conley tries to step clear. Well caught by Long. Back it comes to Phoebe again. The advantage rule paid. Melbourne taking advantage of it. Up towards Walsh. A big fist away by the Essendon centre half back. Back up towards the circle. And that indeed was a high tackle. O'Donnell brushes it to the side very nicely. Long kick. Could be Essendon's first goal. Oh, great. But the mark is taken for Melbourne by Rode right on the line. Great mark by Peter Rode. Incidentally, he's played more games here on the Oval than any other player playing league football. Thank you, Don, for that. Up towards Lovell on centre wing. I think he might have taken the ball up. No, he hasn't. O'Donnell will go the spoil. Did it well. Antrobus in everything for Essendon so far. Melbourne's defence is working pretty well. Once again, the hand pass comes to Rode. Late tackle by Long. Up towards centre wing. A chance for the Demons through Tingay. Can't get clear. A wild hand pass. Comes out in the direction of Viney. Now it's on to Newport. Newport going for a pass. He'll be trying to find Bennett. But Hamilton's there in front of Darren Bennett and he gets clear. Hamilton's kick. Looking wide for Johnson. Johnson can't control it. Tingay not much better. And it goes over for a boundary throw in. Interested spectators here at the Oval and I'm sure they're going to get their money's worth. We've got a sellout crowd here in the final of the Foster's Cup for 1989. Melbourne go forward again. There's a mark here at half forward. Beveridge gets the hand pass off to Seau. Seau, who's on the ground, a high kick into the forward pocket. Bennett can't mark. The crumbs are picked up by Jackson. A little chip kick by Jackson hits the post. Bad luck for Melbourne. Nearly their second goal. 
and the Bombers really struggling, Don, up on their forward line. Well, Melbourne just, defence playing pretty well. Well, Melbourne are playing with far more polished football. They're in there. Their disposal is a little bit superior to that of uh, Essendon. They're much cleaner, but also they want the ball. Magnificent kick by Underwood. Seau gathers at half forward. Gets the hand pass off to Bailey, who was standing still. Now Seau goes after it again. Tingay wide. Chance for Todd Viney. Todd Viney's kick up towards the forward pocket. The mark is taken by Underwood. He plays on quickly. He's going to be cornered. He gets the hand pass away. Johnson deep in the back pocket. The left foot kick by Johnson. Close to the boundary line. Very close. It's out on the full. And umpire Lee Patterson out there on that outer wing, of, if we would like to call it that. There's the Geelong umpire, uh, Geelong doctor. Hugh, well done. You're in the screen there. The free kick is taken by Todd Viney. And he kicks the, uh, the Demons into attack. Up towards full forward. The mark is taken by Simon Madden. Madden, one of the veterans of the bomber combination. Up towards centre wing, and there's another one. But Danaher misses the mark, and it's a chance for Melbourne again through Keogh. What well, lovely sidestep, ultimately caught by Long. Back it comes to Manning, into Andrevis. Probably Essendon's best player so far, O'Donnell the chance. Tingay putting pressure on him. Back up support from Somerville, but he did get his kick. Road again, great mark. Actually, Road went down earlier when he went for that uh, ball against Danaher. You can see him limping. The reason why he is limping, because of this treacherous circuit, the surface. He uh, slipped his ankle as he went for a punch. And this might take its toll on the players, the ground. Yes, it is a little... Uh, well, it's slippery anyway. Chance for Steins. Brushes that tackle. Just as well he did. But Melbourne looking the better combination at the moment. This is Bailey. Only a short kick. The recipient is Steve Newport. Madden, yes, second grab, a juggle, and the turf becoming a little bit cut up out there. Tell you what, Somerville's tackle on uh, the big fella was close. Long in front, couldn't complete the mark. Melbourne getting first to the ball though at the moment. Road again, brushes the tackle from his opposite number 41, spears the pass into Lovell from a standing start, kick dropping short. Simon Madden again a juggle, but he does mark in front of Luke Beveridge. What we've also got to consider is that Essendon are kicking with this wind. Well, it's a very swirling wind, Don. It's not going to make conditions easier for the players. As I mentioned earlier in the telecast, we had gales over here in Britain on Friday night. Did a lot of damage, uh, including to the Foster sign on the gasometer, which uh, was almost blown to bits. Now, the free kick is going uh, Essendon's way. It'll be taken down there by Manning, former St Kilda player. Big pack of players in the goal square. Buick, always dangerous, close to goal but it dribbles over the boundary line in front of Marnie and we'll see a boundary throw in about five metres from the behind post. So a chance for Essendon's first uh, goal. At the back is Danaher, trying to do a Gary Ablett and kick the goal. Phoebe breaking well clear. And the ball kicked up by Matthew Phoebe. Good long kick. Seo uh, leading in the race for the ball. Now it's picked up for Melbourne by Beveridge. Beveridge looking to get clear, gets shirt fronted for his efforts. Oh, good and mark. A great mark taken by Seo. And Melbourne looking the goods at the moment as it comes down towards Darren Bennett. Graham at centre half forward, can't break through. Seo again, a chance for Danny Seo. His kick has been marked by Jackson. Well, Don, we said luck is a fortune in this game. And but that he, was a little bit of good luck there for the Demons. Ricky Jackson's always in that fortunate position, isn't he? Now we've seen him figure, th uh, this is the third time in play, he got a kick off the ground, nearly a goal. He set it up for Bennett, now he's going for his first. Jackson's kick is accurate, so Melbourne's second goal on the board. Up to Michael Long, gets a pretty good hand pass out, and here's a good chance for an Essendon build-up as Manning kicks forward, but it's out of bounds, I think, on the full. And in fact, that is the case, and so it's a Melbourne free kick, and that will be taken in the left back pocket by Marnie who did such a great job in Toronto on Barry Stodham. And he's not doing a bad job here this afternoon. I know John Northey is very pleased with his efforts. Walsh, Keogh, late tackle by Manning. Long goes for the knock-on. Ball very close to the boundary line. Now two Essendon players are down there. Spawn a chance. Ball finally kicked up towards full forward. Overrunning it is Werner. Vanderhaar, who did so well in Miami on the bottom of the pack. Now Conley has the chance to pick it up close to the line, can't do so. And it will be thrown back into play, 10 metres from the scoring area, Essendon's right forward pocket. Might get a shower of rain here, conditions fairly dull at the moment. After some good weather last week, Steins and Somerville again out of bounds. I think Melbourne, Peter, at this stage would be pretty keen on just wasting time. Yes, we've there's no time on here, is well, there? Well, we've said that the wind looks as though it's favouring the end to which the Bombers are kicking in this first quarter. 
big pack of players around the ball it's be about 20 Somerville and Steins again won by Somerville Manning got a good hip and shoulder O'Donnell snapshot marked by Wallace just inside the boundary line I think yes it will be paid now a very tricky kick this he's trying to put himself on a better angle well he's got plenty of room here Peter what he could do is go way back on the fence and then a couple of side steps the opponents will not get near him he'll have plenty of time to steady and open up the face of goal well, let's see if he can do that Bombers badly needing a goal first two scored by Melbourne awkward kick off the boot we'll have to wait on the goal and by the crowd likes it it's through distance perhaps could have gone for goal it was a great kick so we've got a boundary throw in about 20 meters around from the Essendon goal it's uh, close to quarter time high over the top Steins big punch there by Marnie long tackled but couldn't get the ball away free kick picked out of it by umpire Brian Sheehan and it's going to Chris Connolly the umpires for this match are Brian Sheehan and Dennis Rich and Connolly for Melbourne kicks them out of trouble out towards halfback the punch by Terry Danaher attempted kick by Terry Danaher Buick tackled didn't have the ball and Buick will take the free kick Steins 50 meter penalty very obvious Jimmy you should have given that back on the ball so this gives Buick the opportunity from well very near the 10 meter square Darren Buick should not miss can't afford to do that what Jimmy Steins did on that occasion thought he'd learned his the lesson line. after the uh, 87 preliminary final yeah that's undisciplined stuff isn't it Don well he is anxious to impress his uh, parents are across here from Dublin Buick goes for goal and Buick puts it through the second goal for Essendon well Darren Buick was a very good player over in uh, Miami on that very small ground he needed a strong heart on that particular night because of the ground wasn't all that long uh, big and players certainly had to put their bodies in and Buick always does that he's a class player recruited from Western Australia this is his second year and he shows a lot of potential the redhead from Perth wide expanses of the oval as we look towards the gasometer on the outer side the light getting just a little bit better let's hope that it continues to improve throughout the afternoon or evening as it is back home back into the center Madden jumps high gets it away for Essendon Buick again in the thick of things a knock-on picked up by Manning Essendon looking a little bit better Great Danner smart. offloaded let's see who's going to get it out of the center O'Donnell might get a free kick there for in the back and that's how the umpire has seen it O'Donnell deciding to play on that's a good long kick going close to goal Vanderhaar just gets a hand to it as it crosses the line and one behind here's the result of the bombers looking a little bit better in the latter stages of the first quarter we've got approximately 30 seconds to go sean white brings the ball back into play good long kick to the gasometer side punched away by madden opportunity conley hand pass is effective to beverage beverage's kick going pretty close to the boundary line it's out on the full and it'll be an Essendon free kick to be taken by Dean Wallace. We saw CO running through screen then, hit playing at centre half forward. He's already, already had the compliment played, and that is Terry Danaher has been shifted from half forward flank to centre half forward. And Wallace to take the free kick. Players not kicking the ball well, Walsh, but there is the siren for the end of the first quarter. And a pretty good quarter of football for Melbourne in the first quarter Buick and Wallace the goal kickers for Essendon it's a point the difference in favour of the Demons Don Scott how did you see the first two well I thought that 50 metre uh, penalty of Steins was critical because of the fact that it allowed Essendon back into this game you can't afford to do that as we mentioned at that stage now Melbourne really did play well because they're kicking against a very strong breeze and they kept um, uh, Essendon virtually scoreless until the last part of that uh, particular quarter and looking at the stats there the interesting one there I believe could be the tackles they're in favor of uh, the Essendon side and mainly because they were running second hit outs uh, that's an interesting one too because I think Steins is doing quite well although it's eight to three in favor of the Essendon side but the other stats oh well handballs favoring Melbourne they've done a lot of running and I suppose that's the best way starting off initiating a handball and running the ball into the bruising it's 12 more possessions to Melbourne uh, Don and I think it's indicated uh, when you mentioned just late in the first quarter that Essendon kicked that goal through Buick that's given them uh, the opportunity with only one point the difference at this stage and we begin the second quarter of the Foster's Cup Grand Final from the Oval one point the difference in favour of the Demons Steins and Madden 
Neither gets an effective tap out. Sio charges through. Essendon player grabbed a little bit too high as Andrew Manning. Doing well. He is doing well. Manning, former St Kilda player. Bailey in front. Gee, he almost took that mark after seemingly in a hopeless position. Knock on by Underwood. Picked up by Long. Long's kick is not long, but it's out wide to Antrobus. Gives the hand pass to Vanderhaar, who did well in Miami. Not doing so well here at the Oval so far, and his kick dribbles over the boundary line. Just again, Peter, it uh, would probably be Paul Vanderhaar's last game of football. Yes, uh, he has I think announced he's announced his, his retirement, hasn't he? And uh, doing well in Miami, as you said. Let's hope he does reasonably well here. Certainly been uh, a great player for Essendon. Knocked down by Stein to Antrobus. He's kicked that out on the floor, I would think. Yes, he has. And it'll be a free kick to Melbourne. To be taken by Chris Connolly. He's doing well in the back pocket. Great comeback by him too because he missed, uh, I think it was more than a season with a knee injury. He's certainly done well to get back into VFL football. Ball kicked up towards the right half forward flank and indeed it's out of bounds in front of Lovell and also Johnston. Well, yeah. Melbourne playing that well then because there's only two kicks and one handball and they've got it down on the half forward flank. Now that gives you an indication of the strength of this win. Now Essendon, on the other hand, tried to handball the ball with the breeze. Better to kick it long as they did then, Melbourne. Steins and Madden once more. Both had a fresh air shot, that's too high a beverage. And Tempers again becoming a little bit frayed. And the umpire's pretty quick to come in and sort that out. And Beveridge will take the free kick for Melbourne. He's a long way from goal, probably about 55 to 60 metres at least. And that's a pretty good kick. Right into the goal square, two Essendon players fly and it will be rushed through for one behind. So indicates the goal umpire. So if we want to get an idea of uh, which end the wind is favouring, Luke Beveridge, he's kicked that ball from about 60 metres right into the goal square. Great kick by Beveridge. Hamilton, the Essendon player, to kick the ball back in. He goes to the outer side. Big punch by Seau. Puts the bomber defence under pressure. That was a very, very crude tackle by Jay Viney on Mark Thompson. And the Essendon defender will take the free kick. Look at the wind. Gather that ball. Manning puts it back towards the Melbourne half-forward line, gathered by Werner. Werner kicking under pressure, out wide. High flyer out there was Sean White. Opportunity for Rode to back him up. Chris Danaher's on the ground now for Essendon. He was started on the interchange bench. And the English fans really getting into the spirit of things here at the Oval, enjoying a pot or two. But the weather, obviously not uh, conducive to that sort of thing, but they're still enjoying themselves here in this Foster's Cup final. Underwood gets the ball about 10 metres towards his goal. The Demon defence now under a little bit of pressure. Opportunity for Newport. Seow flicks it through his legs. That was a little bit dicey. It's allowed to go by umpire Dennis Rich and we'll have a boundary throw in on centre wing. And it's good to see Seow performing now because if you can hold that centre half forward position you do control the game. He's putting his body in, he's creating, he's punching and he's got a big body and he's starting to use it. These two men having a titanic struggle, trying to crash through was Todd Viney. Grabbing the football was Werner. Werner kicks it up towards half forward. Walsh can't control the football. Sean White appealing for a free kick out of bounds on the full. So he was very perceptive because that's the way it's going and Rode kicks the Demons out of trouble. The high kick to between centre and centre half forward. The bouncing ball gathered well by the player there. Was that uh, O'Donnell? Werner, Werner kicks it towards centre wing, gathered by Newport. The hand pass is astray, a little bit too low there for Rod Keogh. We'll have another boundary throw in. And it's good to see Rod Keogh getting his opportunity because he was really impressive at the night games pre-season. His form dropped through injury. He finished up in the under-19s, has worked his way up, and he, I believe, is a player of the future. Madden gets it out. Manning, he's best on the ground so far, I would think. Done a lot of useful work for Essendon. Werner again, scooped out. Antrobus. The Ant, not too angry today, but he's playing well for the Bombers. Walsh, almost a juggled mark, but not paid by the umpire. And Melbourne's defence really doing well so far. They've held the Essendon forwards well down. This is uh, Johnston, up to half forward. Ball hits the deck again. Marnie, well tackled by Danaher. That's Chris Danaher. And umpire Dennis Rich adjudicating that's held to him. And it will be a ball up right on the edge of the centre square. Good effort by Marnie to run through then. Walsh and Steins, won by Steins, and the ball slapped out ultimately to Seo. Seems to be moving okay despite the injured ankle that he uh, received in Toronto. Thompson takes the ball out in front of Keogh, and again, the boundary umpire will throw it in. 
Kevin Sheedy's now got Mark Thompson on Ricky Jackson after that first quarter where Jackson was a real focal point and a thorn in the side of the Essendon side. Thompson, of course, another player to come back after missing around about a season with a knee injury. Just know that Brian Sheehan went down too, so it's pretty slippery out there. Lovell, the opportunity. Andrebus appealing for a free kick. Technically, I suppose he should have got one. Not by Brian Sheehan saying there's nothing in it. And Andrebus, the last one to get up with the ball. Around about 50 metres from goal. The bounce on the gasometer wing. I don't think it'll bounce very high over there. Knocked away by Werner. In fact, it's knocked out of bounds, but umpire Sheehan, I think, has given a free kick. Indicating that it was going to Madden one second. And then, obviously, realising that Jimmy Steins kicking to the right of screen was the recipient of the free kick. Thank you for that explanation. I was wondering what he was doing. Steins down to half forward. Viney went up for Melbourne. Madden from a standing start with that awkward left foot that he has, but it's been pretty accurate in front of goals over many seasons. Beveridge and Antrobus tangle. The umpire says play on, and Steins will try to do just that. Newport gets beaten for it by Manning. Great play to Grenvold, who fumbles the greasy ball. Almost a high tackle. The umpire says play on. Things becoming pretty willing. Graham to Steins again. Well tackled. The hand pass comes to Bailey. Bailey's kick is high down towards the square, but the umpire has found a free kick again. Against Steins, and it'll go to, looks like Somerville, is it? No, O'Donnell, because O'Donnell okay. laid the tackle on Steins after he got rid of the ball, and Jimmy wanted to go on with it in a physical sense, and the umpire trying to restore some order into this game. O'Donnell's kick drops in short. Johnson gets the hand pass out wide. Hamilton well tackled, but he gets the hand pass away to Terry Danaher. Terry Danaher's kick across his body. Marnie coming out to meet the ball a little awkwardly. Ball close to the line goes over in front of uh, Van der Haar, and Sean White will have a boundary throw in. It's that half forward for the Bombers. About 50 metres, well, it's 51 metres to be exact, from the bomber goal. Boundary umpire Patterson throws it in. Chance now for Newport. Gets the hand pass back. Lovell. The kick has been marked by Terry Danaher. And Terry Danaher plays on quickly. Kicks it in towards centre half forward. And there's the man who's perhaps best man on the ground at this stage. It's Manning, who's played a tremendous quarter and a half in the centre for Essendon. And bad marking by the Melbourne side there because they had two uh, fellows at the centre half forward position. He hooks the kick into the pocket. Uh, high over the top was Van der Haar. Couldn't take the mark and it goes over for boundary throw in, in that left forward pocket. So the Bombers a chance to add to their score. They're 2-1-13. Melbourne at 2-3. 15. A big punch. It lands in the square. Two Melbourne players, Connolly and White. Walsh fighting for it. Now Chris Danaher kick. The mark is taken by Marnie right in the goal square. And Marnie, long kick wide to the half-back flank area and it goes over for a boundary throw-in. Two points the difference in Melbourne's favour in the Foster's Cup final for 1989. Collingwood currently the holders. There's Michael Long and uh, young Somerville on the bench for the Bombers and it's a titanic struggle. Not much happening on the scoreboard but plenty of things happening on the ground. Now Newport gets the ball out wide. Matthew Phoebe kick off the ground by Walsh. It comes to Manning from 50 metres. Andrew Manning goes bang. It goes across the face. Van der Haar marks it, but it's through for another behind. So it's one point the difference in favour of Melbourne, and we're halfway through the second quarter. Well, it is a low-scoring game. Maybe it's the way that these teams are going at it because of a lot of players around the ball, especially in the centre between the two or the respective half-back lines and half-forward lines making it very difficult to get the ball cleanly out of the centre of the ground. Sean White kicks in, Stein slaps it down at the back. Werner might be getting, no, he's not going to get uh, get there first. The ball finally booted out. Beveridge for uh, Melbourne by uh, Luke Beveridge, down to Thompson. Oh, got one a little bit too high. Danaher. Danaher from a standing start, up towards the edge of the square, and again the mark being misjudged. Slap further back for Melbourne by Graham. Inside 50. There's that man again, Andrew Manning. Bailey, tackled by Buick, but he breaks that one pretty easily. Lovell can't handle it. Buick, got one maybe a little bit too high. This is Grenfold now, well tackled by Bailey. Plenty of pre uh, pressure being applied by both sides. Tell you what, the boys are keen, Pete. They are keen. Hey, that was hot stuff then, Don, wasn't it? Well, this is good to see because yeah, that's what the people come along to play. They come along to see a contest and uh, they all obviously just don't appreciate what's going on there. O'Donnell. Nobody can get clear. Almost getting clear with Spawn. You see sunshine breaking through almost here at the Oval. Kevin Walsh 
just one that normally he would have taken. Underwood can't affect the hand pass. Phoebe on the bottom of the pack, intercepting his Buick. Pretty hot stuff out there at the moment. Antrobus in everything, well tackled by Phoebe. Plenty of tackles being applied by both sides. Back it comes to Darren Buick, but the umpire has paid it to him. Now he's gone out wide. Might he almost be a little bit too wide. Now Grenville will get there in front of the scoreboard. In fact, right on the boundary line. 75 metres from goal. Two Melbourne players are there. They actually spoiled each other. Not too much talking. But the Demons defence working over time. That was Graham who had his kick smothered. Van der Haar back to O'Donnell. 50 metres out. Spot on in towards the square. Might be a free kick. Against Antrobus. Pushing the back on Connolly. And Chris Connolly doing some sterling work down there in the back pocket will take the free kick. Connolly in front, Madden. Well, he's taken a few marks today and they've all been juggled and that what initially looked like being a one-hander. And he dragged it in. The former Essendon captain, that awkward looking left foot, just letting him down a little bit at the moment. Steins from the back pocket, thought about giving the hand pass to Lovell, then decides to go across the ground. He's kicked at a good 75 metres though, but getting there first for Essendon will be Grenvold. Yes, it was a two-on-one situation for the Bombers. Grenvold gathers the ball, his kick is in towards centre half forward. Good gather by Bailey, and under pressure, Brett Bailey gets the kick away out towards the centre wing area. The gather by Todd Viney is pretty good. Newport, hand pass goes away. Jay Viney, a long kick up towards full forward. Marking oh. contest, that could be against Hamilton. And the free kick will go to Bennett. Well, that was a lay down was there then. And that's the advantage of playing a big fellow at that full forward position because Hamilton could not do anything because of that big body. He couldn't move Bennett, who was in front. And all he could do on that occasion was in free. As you can see there, Bennett coming back in desperation. He tried to put his hand over the shoulder, Hamilton. Hence, he gave away the free. But Bennett from 30 metres directly in front. The kick goes across with the breeze. It's all clear. Another goal to Melbourne. 3-3 three, plays. Three, 2-2, two, two, a free kick picked out of it by umpire Rich, and it will go to Essendon to be taken by Terry Danaher. Terry Danaher, Danny Seo on the mark. Danaher's kick is a poor one. In short, O'Donnell gathers well. Oh, great Good tackle. tackle by Todd Viney. Ball comes to Bailey. Bailey's kick towards half forward. Seow, what can he do with it? Knock it down brilliantly to Beveridge. Beveridge's kick across his body's into the pocket. A mark, is it? No, Bennett can't take it. Thompson under pressure. Look at the Melbourne forwards. They're disciplined. Jay Viney gets the hand pass out towards Seo, and Seo crashes into Terry Danaher, and there's Jay Viney in the action. And Beveridge goes down from a Grenville tackle, and it's great stuff here at the Oval as Jay Viney comes in and remonstrates with young Dean Wallace. Umpire will throw it in. About 55 metres around from the Melbourne goal. Jimmy Steins gets the tap out. Jay Viney, can he control the ball? He knocks it to the advantage of Lovell. Coming out from full forward is Bennett and Hamilton. Hamilton can't control it. That was a little bit crude. Play in in the goal square. And Jay there's Viney. fights everywhere. And these Melbourne forwards really lining the Essendon backman up. We can see there a dust up. Free Beveridge. kick to Hamilton. Hamilton kicks it wide towards half forward. Opportunity for Lovell. The dust up continues. Lovell kicks it into the pocket. Hamilton's there. The ball goes through. Play goes on. Buick has the ball in the back pocket. Buick's left foot kick towards centre half back. The mark is taken by Manning. And he plays on quickly. No messing around by Andrew Manning. Kicks it up towards Antrobus. Kick off the ground by Connolly. Out wide towards centre wing where Spawn leads in the race for the ball. A good gather. The tackle by Connolly is effective because it rushes the ball over for a boundary throw in. And there's also a report behind play. Grenvold has been reported, or is it Beveridge, but both numbers have been taken by the emergency umpire. Yes, that was John Russo. He came out onto the play after that. Oh, and uh, Seo cop on a little bit too high too. So things becoming a little bit willing out there. This is Grenvold, who may have had his number taken. And Steins has dropped Antropus behind play, and Antropus has gone back in. So it's certainly heating up. Well, play is continuing, and the mark is taken by Wallace. No dies in the back of your head here. There will be a few reports, and that fight is still continuing on the gasometer wing. So in the second quarter, like we had in the first, tempers just becoming a little bit frayed. The ball's still in play. It's picked up by Hamilton. He gets well tackled by Sean White. The umpire says holding the ball, and play on continues. It's down to Darren Bennett. He's already kicked two goals, but it beats him over the line, and Peter. he'll be thrown back into play. Peter, that's what wins matches. That tackle by Great Sean stuff, White it? on Hamilton gave young Matthew Phoebe the opportunity and with a little bit more experience Matthew Phoebe could nearly have goaled from that kick 
certainly the wind favoured by that end, it would appear. Werner got high. Bennett, oh, he's doing a Gary Ablett, or trying to, from the boundary throw-in, but it's rushed through for one behind. So no, uh, only one goal scored so far in the second quarter. That was by Darren Bennett. It was his second. So it's 2-2 two, two to 3-4 now. Low-scoring Foster's Cup Grand Final, but it's action-packed at the moment. Oh, Manning he plays was gone. on. He was he gone. Tackled yes. by Luffel and Keogh. Well, I thought he was on off. that occasion. Yes, agree with you, Don. Well, he perhaps he didn't go forward over his mark. Umpire Rich in a good position. Playing a good game, though, Manning. I think generally accepted he's best on the ground so far. This is Road. He's opposite number 41. Road with a good long kick to within about 30 metres of goal. But Hamilton strong in defence for Essendon. Goes for the short pass. Not a good one. Intercepting is Steve Newport. Great mark. Good mark by Newport. Nearly to risk his body. Now, with this breeze, let's see how he goes. Oh, He's tried oh. for the spiral punt kick, or torpedo if you like, and Werner sees it over the boundary line, or is it a behind? It's the latter. And so one further point to the Melbourne side. You can see that strong wind blowing the hair of the players. Terry Danaher will do the kicking in. Interesting, Peter, it's only nine points difference. Now, Melbourne are controlling play, and with this win, they should be further in front at half-time. 3-5 to 2-2 is the score. 17 minutes and 20 seconds have gone in the second quarter. This is Danny Seo, left foot to the ball pretty quickly. That's not bad from Seo, and the goal umpire says full points. You know, if you're not careful... Road under pressure, punch away by Sean White. Opportunity again for White. He gets the hand pass out to Hawkins, who's on the ground. The mark not taken by Madden. Under pressure, Terry Danaher. Oh, Antrobus goes down from a beverage tackle. Play on now. Terry Danaher takes the hand pass, but umpire Sheehan will call for the ball to be kicked. Well, shouldn't that be a mark. free kick? A free kick, he handball. Hand from the free or it should kick. be a bounce down, a bounce, I should say. Correct weight, yes. The kick by Antrobus wide towards the centre wing, and the mark has been taken by Johnson. So Johnson for Essendon to kick the ball towards centre half forward. The marking contest wide up over the top. Kicked out by Road, back in towards the centre. Terry Danaher's in the van, he can't mark. The ball comes to the back. It's going to be advantage of Lovell. Up towards half forward. Oh, crash to the ground goes Bennett. Kick off the out of mid-air by Seow. Mark to Johnson, no, play on. Opportunity for Jay Viney, goes for goal and misses. Jay Viney there indicating perhaps that uh, not enough support coming from his teammates but still he's got the ball down in the Melbourne forward area 4-5 plays 2-2 and in a low scoring game Essendon is still in it kick in by Thompson comes towards this uh, grandstand side Mark has been taken by Manning and he has played an exceptional game so far Andrew Manning the kick is taken by Danaher Danaher at centre half back the mark is taken by Antrobus Antrobus, a lively customer. The hand pass goes off to O'Donnell. Back to Antrobus and down goes O'Donnell from a Tingay tackle. Underwood, the kick by Underwood into the forward pocket. Oh, it's a Melbourne great mark, mark, a great mark. Yes, you've picked it, Don. Taken by Chris Connolly in the back pocket. He plays on quickly. The left foot kick by Connolly out towards half back and there's a mark taken by Keogh. He plays on quickly. There's a man on his own up on the centre wing, but the kick by Keogh is a poor one. Terry Danaher read it pretty well, intercepted, got the hand pass away, and it's a boundary throw in. That was good play by Melbourne. Conley, as siren the siren set. goes, for half time. Pretty interesting second quarter, as uh, we mentioned. Or South Caulfield, or to wherever. Lily uh, Don was oh, an amazing crowd. And this, is a sell, and this is a sellout crowd, and the crowd are really getting involved in it. They don't know the finer points of the game, but gee, they love the dust ups, don't they? Actually, that's interesting, uh, Peter. Most codes of, uh, of football, uh, the round ball sport or the gridiron or whatever, you really do have to know the rules. And if, you, if, if the people over here can pick up the rules of this game... <laughs> well, we can't pick up not, the rules, are well, they? Well, basic <laughs> rules, I think. Oh, basic it, it's rules. Going to, it's yep. going to be a, a, a game. It is without doubt. I mean, we, we're perhaps biased, but without any doubt, it's the most spectacular ball sport in the world. That's what the Canadians said to us almost to a man when we were over there. And one thing... I think should be noted too, they had 24,000 at the Sky Dome, and that was just after the efforts of the Blue Jays doing so well in the baseball, and also at that same weekend was a match, uh, in fact there were three matches in one week involving the Toronto Maple Leafs, the ice hockey team at Maple Leaf Gardens, and still 24,000 turned up for the football. 
It was interesting uh, being driven to Miami. Um, you know, we're talking about the interpretation of the rules, and the cab driver says, man, I see this game on, on SBN, but I just don't understand. It seems to be a hell of a lot of men just going everywhere, and I don't know what they're doing. I don't think they do either. What's hey, I thought we they had... Well, I, thought, I don't know, but... I thought we had Don Scott in the box here with us, Pete. I'm not quite sure what exit that was, Don. You must explain <laughs> it a bit of Irish-American. The uh, Essendon Brains Trust. Look at Kevin Sheedy there. I don't think he's too happy with his men. Daryl Gerlach on the left and David Collins with young Brendan Moore. Who uh, obviously in did he, yes, mm. and uh, oh, missing out in this match. OK, so repeating the score at half-time. Melbourne 4-6, leading Essendon 2-2, two, two, and the goal kickers for Melbourne, Bennett 2, and singles to Sio and Jackson. Jackson had a hand in uh, a couple of others as well, and one of his shots also hit the post. Buick won for Essendon, and Wallace also won goal. And, of course, I suppose it should be pointed out, too, that Jimmy Steins gave away a 50-metre penalty, which probably would not have been a goal had uh, it not transpired. And interesting enough, talking about Jimmy Steins, his parents are over here from Dublin. He's got all his mates from Dublin, so likewise Sean White. Although he's recruited from uh, Dublin or Ireland, Sean, he's a Scotchman, and uh, his parents have come down in relations from Scotland. So it's got a real international flavour. I know Melbourne are over there recruiting, Geelong are over recruiting, and Carlton. also Carlton are recruiting from Ireland now. So it's really starting to get that feel about it. Give Melbourne some credit too with a, a very, very undermanned team uh, to be leading at this stage by 16 points. Their youngsters have certainly put in. As they did in Toronto, Ian. Yes. Youthful enthusiasm. So the second half just about to get underway. These quarters are 25 minutes in duration. First two were 20. There's no time on. Second half of the Fosters Cup. We begin the third quarter. Melbourne leading by 16 points. Reports have been made after some action-packed uh, stuff in the first half. Steins gets the first kick out of the centre. In fact, it goes right across the ground at the centre wing, beating Lovell and Johnston over the line. And we'll see a throw-in on the gasometer wing. And that wind, if anything, has picked up in the last uh, half hour or so. It was very strong, as we mentioned, on Friday night over here. Steins, a fresh air shot, but the umpire's seen a free kick. And it's going Essendon's way to Simon Madden. She's kicked that pretty well with the breeze. Over the back is Conley. Can't quite handle it. Andrebus going in solidly. And the part Dennis Rich will bounce it on the 50 metre line. Most important for Essendon to try to get the first goal. Trailing by 16 points in this low scoring affair. Walsh and Steins. One by Walsh. Beveridge got a hand to it. A good tackle applied by Conley, almost deserving of a free kick. But the umpire says no. And umpire Dennis Rich was in a perfect position to make that decision. Manning wasn't getting very far at all, was he? Walsh with Steins. Conley again in the thick of things, as he has been. Manning once more. A good hand pass, a chance for Werner right on 50 with the breeze. That'll go pretty close distance-wise. In fact, he gets the distance easily. He must have kicked it 60 metres, but it's only one behind to Essendon. 2-3. They still haven't got a goal since the first quarter. And really, Peter, that was a bad mistake then because it was Manning who got it out over to Werner running past. He really did have an open shot for goal. The ball went off the side of his foot. It was a slice, but he just didn't quite get onto it. Conley's kick up towards Michael Long. He spent some time on the bench during the second quarter. And that's pretty close to out of bounds. In fact, it is, says umpire Lee Patterson. That'll be thrown back into play on the gasometer wing. And good play there by young Matthew Phoebe to hem Buick in on the boundary line and push it over. Steins. Chris Danaher tries to take it out of the air on the bottom of the pack. That looks as though it might be Gary O'Donnell, is it? And umpire Rich will come in and ball it up. In front of the big gasometer here that... Uh, makes the oval look rather small that gasometer the bounce no one can really do much with it so we'll have another ball up just outside the 50 meter line in Essendon's forward half well this is what Melbourne want they want to congest the ball over there keep the ball out on that flank because Essendon won't be able to bring it in against the breeze Steins gets the tap out long gathers white goes through him but it doesn't go through Somerville Marnie at the back does pretty well for a big young fellow and gets his kick away back in towards the centre. The ball carried pretty well. In the centre, Jay Viney puts some pressure on Terry Danaher. The hand pass comes across from Johnson. 
Opportunity now for Werner. Can he break clear? Yes, one bounce. Bit of attacking football now by Michael Werner. The kick is in short. It goes through all players to the back. Spawn can't do much with it. Neither can White. And White takes it over for a boundary throw-in as Spawn looks rather anxiously at umpire Dennis Rich, perhaps looking for a free kick because Sean White didn't make too much of an effort to keep the ball in the field of play. In the right forward pocket, up over the top, Steins, comes into the square. Keogh helps it through for a behind to the Bombers. So, Essendon, 2-4-16, trailing Melbourne, 4-6-30 in the early part of this third quarter, and they really will need to get a bit of a hurry on the Bombers. Chris Connolly looking to move the ball on quickly. Alex to kick it wide again, and pretty good kick by Connolly out towards half-back. The mark has been taken by Steins, and Steins, who's doing a pretty good job for the Melbourne side, his opponent, obviously, Simon Madden. The kick goes wide. The mark is taken by Todd Viney. Todd Viney looking to play on. Kicks it towards half forward. Seow, a big punch comes from behind by Wallace and it goes over for a boundary throw in. The play between wing and half forward for Melbourne on that outer side, which is a, a very, very bad side to come in from. The wind is very strong blowing across to that, that side of the ground. Now Keogh can't control it. Johnson in there for Essendon. So is Underwood. And the umpire will come in and ball it up. Well, Essendon have made a change. Some of all has gone off from their full forward position and they've brought on Paul Hamilton who started at full back. So bounce and a pretty crowded affair it is. Comes out to Beveridge. Beveridge's kick is, uh, well, very high. Only travels about 25 metres. That's a good tackle by Lovell. The ball doesn't spill free. But the umpire once again will ball it up. Ben is a thinking player, Peter. The way he attacked the ball on that occasion, he had the little fellows on his right, and with his right hand, he tried to put it down on his right side. It just didn't quite come off, but the intent was good. Steins has his kick partly smothered. Beveridge off the ground. Chance for Jackson, who's been dangerous close to goals, and he is again. He's put that one through for four points. To get it out of the centre. Long scoops it out to O'Donnell. His kick only travels about 15 metres. It should be picked up by Spawn. His hand pass intended for Danaher. But breaking, through, uh, breaking away down there for Melbourne almost was Hawkins. Very congested play on the half-forward line as the ball is kicked over the boundary line on the full by Walsh. And that will be a free kick to be taken, it looks like, by Rode. I think Essen is starting to feel the pressure that Melbourne are starting to apply just in that passage of the play. Players wanting on the Essendon side to get rid of the ball quickly. And we see football politics even taken to London, Ian. So the kick out by road the mark has been taken by Simon Madden Madden to put Essendon back into attack the kick high towards the full forward area Antropus can't control the ball close to the line he goes after it again tackled by Connolly umpire Sheen allows play to go on but uh, over the boundary line for a throw-in the play is about 35 to 40 meters around from the Essendon goal and boy do they need to score two quick goals they're 2-4 trailing Melbourne 5-6 Steins doing the tackling on Walsh. Ball goes over and we'll have another boundary throw in. I think the Ruckman would learn. The ball really did hold up in the air on that occasion. They were so far away from it. Somerville on the interchange bench. Steins gets the punch away. Really goes back towards the Essendon goal. Great gather by Chris Danaher. He can't spin out of trouble. Melbourne defence working closely. Coordinated stuff. And they force the ball over the line again. Connolly trying to bluff the boundary umpire there to get the free kick. And Matthew Marnie not too good behind play, hands on hips. Steins and Walsh, the ball comes down towards Thompson. Struggling hard, Seow, Steins. Now a real struggle for possession, Connolly again. Gets the ball out to Tingay. Tingay's kick has been marked by Madden. Madden's kick back towards full forward. It keeps the ball in that centre area. Long, first real chance for Michael Long. And it's helped through by Matthew Phoebe for another behind to Essendon. 2-5, the Bombers trailing Melbourne 5-6. That's 19 points in favour of the Demons, and they're doing it pretty well. The 1989 Foster's Cup, live from the Oval, and Collingwood, the current holders. Who can win this game? Maybe it looks like this stage, the Demons. Connolly to kick the ball back into play. Of course, that uh, title was won by the Magpies in Toronto last year when they defeated Hawthorne. And the previous year, it was won by Melbourne, so... They're the performers in these overseas games, Melbourne. Melbourne won it in Vancouver at BC Place. Another magnificent indoor stadium. Underwood 
can't get into the open spaces. That's been the rule so far today as players try to congest it. Certainly Melbourne are doing that at the moment to stop the Essendon runners and they're doing it pretty well. Essendon hasn't scored a goal since the first quarter. Walsh and Steins. Walsh gets the front position, knocks it down to Manning. Viney's also on the bottom of that pack. That's Todd Viney. And once again, it will be balled up by the umpire as the sun tries to break through. Ball tapped down to Newport. He can't get clear. Umpire Brian Sheehan will ball it up yet again. I think we should pay a compliment to all the teams that have taken part in this because they've certainly got, I've watched the game in Miami. They certainly went about it in the right way and they're going about it in the right way here today too. Ball not, uh, kicked away by Bailey. And the mark is taken inside the line only just by Luke Beveridge. Oh, he kicked it well. Now that's an interesting one. It's got to be out of bounds. He kicked it out of bounds. It never actually went into play. So a boundary throw it. Better get the rule book out quick. <laughs> we'll let that one go, <laughs> I think, Ian. Steins, Thompson, Connolly. Playing a great game, Chris Connolly. And the mark snapped up, is it? Just on, yes, by Wallace in front of Tingay. Umpire has paid it. He decides to play on. Maybe not the wisest thing to do. And going through solidly is Manning. Beautifully done. Ultimately gets tackled. Trying to set the example to some of his Essendon teammates. Bailey on the bottom of the pack. Chris Danner a chance. Conley again. CO getting dragged down. Finally it's Madden. Gets the hand pass away to Hamilton. He gets offloaded. Now Melbourne through Hawkins. Lovell offloaded as well. Spawn. Melbourne's tackling is excellent. Hawkins loses out. Or oh, Antrobus let go a high one. Not seen by the umpire. And the ball over the boundary line right on 50. So some pretty willing stuff down there. The 20 is Matthew Phoebe. Steins and Madden. Good battle between those two here today. Backup support from Walsh. Steins had it and then lost it. Likewise Underwood. Conley on the bottom of the pack yet again. Long picks it up. Gets out a very quick hand pass to Antrobus, which he can't handle. He gets tackled seemingly with not in possession by Hawkins. And it will be thrown in by no, a free, free kick. kick. Free kick to Andrews. Andrews played, uh, played for that one, I thought, the umpire. And John Russo speaking to him. He's the emergency umpire. Well, he lets them go, uh, uh, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> little <laughs> Anthony. Anthony. Anthony, you were trying to say, yeah. were you? The angry ant, as he's known. That's a beautiful kick. Right into the square. And thumped away by Sean White. Congratulations from his Irish teammate there, Jimmy Stein. We'll see a boundary throw in. Actually, uh, the Melbourne side, a very, very disciplined unit, even when they're playing back in Melbourne or Sydney or wherever, back in Australia, very, very disciplined and, again, a well, terrific effort here. This it's disciplined season. football. It's a football they want to play, but it is not good football as far as a spectator is concerned, is it? Because no, they're, they're, trying, to well, they're trying to cares, create... Mate? Well, they're trying to crowd the game up, not allowing Essendon any movement at all, so it's not good football, but from their point of view, it is. It's not pretty. I think that's the word we're looking for. Sean White over the top. He gets the tap out. Antropus pushed off the ball by Newport. A real struggle at centre-half forward for Essendon. And we'll have another bounce. So precious seconds really ticking away for Essendon. Kicking with the advantage of the breeze in this third quarter. And they still trail by 19 points. 5-6 plays, 2-5. There's 12 and a half minutes left in this third term as Chris Connolly gets clear again. Kicks it basically along the ground. Keo gets the hand pass over the top. Todd Viney runs away. It was Jay Viney giving the hand pass. The kick falls in short and the mark has been taken by O'Donnell. He gets clear. The kick by O'Donnell back in towards the centre. Marnie can't mark. Walsh tries to crash his way through. Gets it to Chris Danaher. Off to Grenvold. Grenvold goes up there to 50 metres. Goes for goal and misses to the right when they really needed that goal. Well, when I paid a compliment to the Melbourne side for crowding the game up, they really did run it well then. They got it down the ground. Then Essendon countered with another great passage of play, bringing the ball quickly from the other end of the ground. So there's a bit of a dust, dust up, up at the half back. It looks like Wallace and one of the young Melbourne players there. Stephen Tingay. Tingay. Got a blood nose, has he? Well, there's a lot of feeling in this yes, game. A bit of spirit. I think oh, both sides really is. want to win. They re they want to be classified as world champions, <laughs> and uh, both teams pretty keen. I know that Kevin Sheedy was uh, really wanting to win this match, and John Northey, one of his ex-teammates coaching Melbourne, uh, certainly uh, 
just as keen. He doesn't like to lose. Sean White takes the kick in and kicks it out towards the centre wing area. Gathered by Jay Viney. Gets the hand pass back to Marnie. Marnie, a good gather. This young player for three weeks was desperate to get back into the Melbourne side and pleaded with the Melbourne selectors. There he is Ooh. again in there with Walsh. Oh, Walsh and helps one. him over the boundary line. And Kevin Walsh says, what's going on, umpire? Why didn't I get a free kick? Umpire Sporton here on this... Uh, near side of the ground to throw the ball back into play. Jimmy Stein's directing traffic for his Melbourne side. He comes in, he can't get the tap out. Gathered by Newport, he's pulled to the ground and umpire Rich will come in and ball it up. Interesting to see Thompson on the ball for Essendon, perhaps looking for a bit of drive. He's one of their real goers, Mark Thompson. And the Bombers struggling at centre half forward for the second, third quarter. They still haven't got a goal since the first term, Underwood. Boot the ball pretty quickly from the pack. Danaher oh, at the back mark. and outmarked by Peter, Peter Road. Rode. Peter Rhodes played at the oval with Carlton when he was a Carlton player on three occasions. And, and that's out of the bound. About pushing the back will be the rule, and the free kick will be taken by Jay Viney. Peter, they're a little lucky there. I thought that was a bad move by Road to short pass. Now John Russo again, the emergency umpire. He's coming covering more ground than the early settlers. Keeping an eye on who he's speaking to, it's Michael Long. I don't know what the indiscretion was there, if there was one, might be just a warning. This is Todd Viney, looks for Bailey, ball bounces, not too kindly for him. Chris Danaher right on his hammer, out to Road again, covering a lot of territory. Road's kick in the direction of Johnston, and it beats him over the boundary line in front of the scoreboard, which doesn't read too well if you're an Essendon fan, 2-6 to 5-6. But only three goals in it, so the Bombers still with every chance if they can get back into this match. 15 and a half minutes have gone in the term. It's Madden and Steins, one by Madden. Good tackle on Manning by Beveridge, or was it? I don't think so. He's going to get the free kick, Manning. He is. A play on call from the umpire. Manning does. Played a great first half. Road misses it. Buick from the standing start. A snapshot is close, but again, misses to the far side. And one behind to Essendon, 2-7. And that's one vantage point that's rather handy. Free admission, a full house at the Oval. Probably wondering what all the fuss is about. Now the Borders men did so very well for Australia. The last test here, though, was drawn. I don't think today's match will be a draw. It's not a particularly good kick, and the mark taken by Antrim is right on 50. And that's not a good kick either. Didn't leave the boot at all well. And again, the behind. And the wind is, as we have mentioned, and as you can see, rather strong. So I'm further behind, so two goals eight now. The Essendon score, still haven't got a goal in this quarter. Interesting that Sean White's going to do the kicking in this time, Peter. Gee, he's got underneath that one a little bit. Still gets about 55 metres in distance. It's an Essendon mark, dragged in by Simon Madden. Now with his, see how he goes with the left foot. And oh, leading out well is Spawn. Good play. Now Spawn's directly in front of goal, but Don, a pretty tricky sort of a kick just the same, isn't it? Well, he's directly in front, and I suppose the breeze will be blowing across his right shoulder, and the ball will carry if he puts it up high to the left, across his, to his left. So he's got to allow for that breeze. Maybe take it out to the right, hoping the wind will bring it back in. Spawn shoots at goal, the crowd likes it, there's plenty of noise, and the goal of Bayer Concur. He's always looking for a player in a better position. He tried it earlier, it just didn't quite come off. On that occasion, he got it across to Ricky Jackson, intelligent tap on. Jackson, the ever, he's always the opportunist, Jackson, and again, a quick handball, retained his composure and got it over to Hawkins, a young fellow coming on for his first game for Melbourne. So, six goals, uh, the Demons, they're six goals, eight to 3-8 ball bounce back in the centre Todd Viney throws himself into it umpire Sheehan will come in and ball it up it's 6 goals 6 a correction there 6-6-42 six, six, Melbourne Essendon 3-8-26 and we're very very close to three quarter time here at the Oval in the 1989 Fosters Cup final a free kick from that bounce it'll go to Simon Madden he looks to play on the Melbourne player coming in late was Tingay. The ball into the pocket, and here's Connolly. He's probably Melbourne's best player. The kick wide, and the mark taken by Hawkins. He plays on, runs away from Werner, kicks it up to within goal-scoring distance. Jackson can't mark. 
gathered by Bennett, left foot, oh. snapped by Bennett, is magnificent! All clear, seventh goal to Melbourne. Pretty handy goal for Melbourne. Demons answering every challenge here in the Fosters Cup final. Manning on the bottom of the pack might get a free kick for in the back. But no, says the umpire. Is this weather reminiscent of Melbourne? Now we've got the sun out, it's blowing, it's cold, and then the sun comes out. Buick so off to Peter and uh, O'Brien on for Essendon. Something for everybody, Don. Knocked down by Steins, Hamilton. Can't barge through a wall of players. And is penalised for holding the ball. It's going to be a free kick to Melbourne to be taken by young Hawkins. Straight down the gap. Three Essendon players are there. CO for Melbourne late on the scene. Picked up by Grenvold at the left half-back flank. He's gone towards the gasometer wing. Sean White is there first. No, he's not. Marnie will be. But the ball beating both of those players over the line for a throw-in on the gasometer wing. Four minutes left, Pete, in this term. And uh, just very obvious there that uh, young Grenvold doesn't kick too well with his left foot. Boundary throw-in on the gasometer wing. Almost been a push out there too. White. Wobbly punt kick. Matt need uh, something from him. He might even be able to get his own hand pass. Simon Madden overruns the ball. Not a kind bounce. Tap on by Jackson. Melbourne doing everything right at the moment. Underwood in turn to Wallace. Who's kicked one goal for Essendon. One of only two so far. Bailey. Good backup support down there by Marnie. Who's impressed not only in Toronto but also here today. So... A great future for that young fellow. De Quite tall. Determination too, Pete. I mentioned that for three weeks during the season, he pleaded with the selectors to keep him on the list. Well, maybe paying dividends. I'm sure John Norley's uh, appreciating his efforts here today. Steins. His efforts in Toronto to uh, put Barry Stone out of business were not too bad. Grenvold at the back is road. Marnie again, backup support. Right on 50, the ball traverses the line. And we will see a throw in with uh, 22 and three quarter minutes gone in the term 25 minutes are being played with no time on Essendon badly needing a goal their forward line has been virtually non-existent today Thompson Walsh out of bounds again once more a throw in perhaps even Kevin Walsh there as he was bumped looking a little staggered giving an indication of how Essendon are looking in this match very oh. very staggered Attempted kick there, and it's coming forward from Manning into the goal square. Kick off the ground by Spawn is a goal. Good Badly effort needed. there. Good effort by uh, Kieran Spawn to kick his second goal, and he was very quick to pick up that opportunity. And wasn't Andrew Manning who got the ball and went straight into the pack? He has not got any regard for his own health, Manning. He's a very courageous player. He was the one who set that up. The ball came from the boundary line went down Manning's vicinity he just took the bit between his teeth ran in really strongly and finished up with uh, Spawn who finished it off well back in the center a good bounce favors Madden Madden gets it down Manning takes it away the free kick has been picked out of it obviously in the ruck contest the free kick will go to Steins Steins right in the center of the oval here in London and Jimmy Steins one minute left in this third term actually the free, free kick, kick. Being picked up down the ground Yes, it's going to Bennett, and, and obviously Van der Haar. Paul Van der Haar was holding Bennett, shepherding out. You can see there Simon Madden remonstrating with Dennis Rich, trying to explain the situation, but that won't do any good, Simon. No, the umpires very, very rarely change their decision, do they, Don? But that's the advantage of the two umpire system, Ian, because one umpire is looking where the ball is going to go and picks up those little incidents. Bennett for his fourth goal. Drop punt kick, magnificent. Straight through the centre, and... Melbourne kick away once again. That's their eighth. Eight six to four eight. And that's the siren by the sound of it. Yes, the umpires indicate. Essendon added two goals. Six. Darren and umpire Brian Sheehan will bounce it again. Danny Seo, the last to get up. A scratch of the head. I think he copped one a little bit high. Isn't enough. Danny Seo played college football, gridiron football in America two years ago. And now he's playing Australian rules. Gone by Long, picked up by Bailey, tackled by Wallace, Todd Barty. Tried to get it to his brother, Michael Long, takes a wide turn. And this is Marty again, over to Stein from a standing start. And the big demon puts his side into attack, Seo over the top, Werner has it, no he lost it. And finally it's Hawkins for Melbourne. Gets it down to Newport, still inside the square, Beveridge, 50 metres out, should be able to score from there with the breeze. Should be able to. Yes, Ian. 
poor kick, Pete, wasn't it? Got the distance, nowhere near the accuracy. And the free kick going Essendon's way will be taken by Gary O'Donnell. That kick really standing up into the breeze. Big pack of players. Tingay kicks pretty quickly into the square and it bounces through for one behind. So I'm further behind to the Demon cause. Eight goals, seven to four goals, eight. 23 points, effectively four goals. Peter Young Hawkins has done pretty well since he's come on the ground. Very skilled athlete, and he's also a very confident cricketer too. I guess one of those players has to make a decision between the two. Some of that is Simon O'Donnell, who played for St Kilda and has also played Test cricket for Australia. Bailey to Keogh to Jay Biney. Snapshot at goal. He's off target, and that's out of bounds, but not on the full. And boundary umpire support will throw it in. Right next to the behind post, 26 Jay Biney. Well, there was Michael Long, Simon Eichold on the left, sits it out. Bennett and Madden. Jackson had it and then lost it. Beveridge from a standing start in front of goal, kicks truly. I would think the goal umpire says four points. Playing it with a lot of confidence. Johnston's kick wide towards the wing. Madden up high, couldn't mark. Grenvold gets the hand pass out. Here's an opportunity now for Essendon to get clear. Manning as well tackled. He's thrown to the ground by Viney. Grenvold comes back towards centre half back, but a free kick goes back to the player who was tackled. Wasn't Manning. That a strong tackle? Have a look at Andrew pretty Manning sore. getting up. Yes, he's pretty <laughs> sore. Actually, he's a mean looking customer, Jay Viney, when you get up pretty close to him. And pretty thick, too. The kick back into the centre. I don't mean thick as in thick in the head, but thick as in the body. You're having a bit of a chuckle there, Donnie, eh? The ball in the centre, and umpire Sheen has picked the free kick out of it. It's going to go to Essendon. Michael Long will take the free kick, and he plays on quickly onto the left foot. The kick is a wobbly one out towards the wing on this near side of the ground. The mark is taken by Hamilton. He plays on quickly up towards full forward. It's allowed to go over the top by Chris Danaher. He perhaps thought it was accurate. It was inaccurate and threw for a behind. He didn't read that well at all, did he, Chris? Don't know whether he could have taken it, but he elected to let it go. And so Rode will bring the ball back into play. We have 20 and a half minutes left in this match. 20 and a half minutes left of football in the 1989 season. Though I dare say off the field activities will continue for quite some time yet. As uh, mergers and what have you are sorted out. But more about that later. This is Wallace on right centre wing. He's gone for a short pass. And the, you see Danaher take the mark. Put it high. And Melbourne doing it well. Running the ball out of defence. Demon defence has been on top pretty well from the start. Speaking of defenders, Gary O'Donnell, 20 metre hand pass. That's it down to his teammate in O'Brien. First time we've seen him in the play for the uh, for the day, and to see Marnie in the road. Go six along foot, with uh, kick, yeah. but six foot six Marnie. If he puts on a bit of beef, a very handy player. Torpedo punt kick. And that's effective. Jay Viney. Mark has taken uh, uh, Jay Viney. And he said Todd Viney on the Newport. Lovely sidestep to get around Wallace and gets met solidly by Michael Long, as does Jay Viney get met solidly by Antrobus. That's what I mean when I said he's thick. <laughs> <laughs> so you were waiting for that, weren't you? Oh, I certainly was. I was trying to recoup my, uh, my comment from earlier. <laughs> well, it could be interpreted he should have made ease of that ball by running around Antrobus. Now, now, Don, I thought I got out of trouble there and you put me right back in the hot seat. Beveridge. Now, he kicked a goal earlier in this quarter. He was a little bit closer in, Luke Beveridge, after missing one. Let's see if he's read that. 11 kicks and three marks has Luke Beveridge. And also against his name, of course, one goal. 55 metres out. The kick is not bad, but only one behind. So a further behind to the Demons. And Essendon now trailing 4-9 to 9-10. It is. Foster's uh, Cup scoreboard to 9-8 it is rather. Lovell. Might have got one a bit high. Hamilton got a push in the back. By Dennis Rich has ruled a stalemate and it will be a ball up right on the edge of the centre square. So a 29 point advantage for Melbourne and Darren Bennett, the leading goal scorer on the ground has kicked four. Endeavouring to get through that heavy traffic was Danny Seau. 
Andrew Manning, the Essendon player, doing the tackling. And the ball will go back to the field umpire. Another bounce, only a metre away from the previous bounce. High over the top, Somerville can't get the ball away. Look at Steins try and crash his way through. Also, Seau coming through strongly too. Yes, well, you tipped that early, Don, that he was a bit of a tough sort of a customer, Danny Seo, and he's certainly shown it this afternoon. Mark Thompson there on the bench. Steins comes down to Grenville. Oh, oh, oh what a he tackle. put that man under oh. pressure. O'Donnell. Tingay tries to get it out to Jackson. Crashing his oh. way through was Wallace on the bottom of the pack. The free Seau. kick will go to Seo. And he'll put Melbourne into attack. And I he's think, done pretty well, hasn't he? I think he? he thought he was on the gridiron field again. Gee, what a magnificent tackle he laid earlier. If he can put in a solid pre-season, he'll be a big plus for Melbourne. Up towards full forward. Over the back, Bennett. Is this goal number six? Oh, he oh. couldn't get his foot to it. And it's rushed through for a behind. Interestingly, was that kick by Seau touched? Because that was the ball that actually bounced through. Didn't look well, yeah, it no, actually it hadn't have been touched. It would have been a goal. Well, that's what I thought. Maybe it was bouncing through untouched. Van der Haar kicks the ball back into play. A beautiful long kick out towards half back. Somerville at the back kicks the ball off the ground. The ball now up towards oh. centre wing. Kick off the ground by Connolly. Comes out to the advantage of Bailey. Bailey's on centre wing. Tries to get the hand pass. No, the left foot kick up towards half forward. And a great mark taken by the solid... Defender come forward in Jay Viney. Well done. I think that's uh, squared off enough, Ian. Vandahar in front, almost a mark, right on the boundary line. Not paid, naturally enough, and a throw in to take place. In the match, 16 and a quarter minutes left of Foster's Cup action. Coming to you live on the Australian Television Network. Bennett in front, tapped out the back, and snapshot at goal. Level is uh, off target. I think he has one behind. So a further point. Melbourne doing it well. Vandahar again will kick in. Very difficult to find options because Melbourne playing disciplined football and picking up all the Essendon leads. And Paul Vandahar's last game. Ball thumped away by Jimmy Steins in front of Beveridge. Still 50 metres from goal. Beveridge has kicked one goal in this last quarter. As Mark Thompson and Darren Buick sit the bench. Maybe the picture there of Darren Buick tells the story insofar as Essendon is concerned. Hasn't been a great day for the Bombers. I think they would have gone into the match as slight favourites after their good effort against Hawthorne. Tingay can't pick it up. Hamilton gets solidly tackled. And doesn't look good. Paul Hamilton is uh, anything but good. He'll take the free kick. If he can't, probably Antrobus will take it. Let's see what happened there. Oof. Antrobus will take it. Paul Hamilton will come off a little bit the worse for wear. Probably uh, Mark Thompson will come back on. Peter Rowe takes the mark in front of Johnston. He's done well today, Peter Rowe. Good player. Usually very solid. Hamilton limps to the bench. Now Rowe, a long way from goal, but should have the breeze over his left shoulder. Need to aim this at the left-hand goal post. He won't score with the kick. Don't no. bet on it. I won't bet on it, but he'll go pretty close. Gee, that's a beautiful kick, isn't it? Right into the goal square. Hawkins, well tackled. Newport snapshot. Straight up and down. Bennett. Boot to ball quickly. Couldn't do much with it. Werner looks for a free kick. Holding the man or whatever. And Michael Werner will get the free kick from umpire Dennis Rich. Crowd really starting to warm and understand this game, aren't they? 14 minutes of the Foster's Cup left. Werner towards the members stand side here at the Oval. Two Essendon players up, none down. Keogh and then Lovell for Melbourne. Lovell's snapshot in towards the goal square. And Paul Van der Haar takes the safe mark. And again, he brings the ball to the uh, grandstand side. And a poor kick by Van der Haar. The breeze holding it up. The mark has been taken by Beveridge. Beveridge on the 50 metre line. And he would be a real chance from here, Luke Beveridge. He's kicked one. As I said earlier, Darren Bennett, the leading goal scorer, has kicked four. Ricky Jackson, two. And Beveridge coming up for kick number 13. He hooks it to the front of the square. Perhaps a disciplined effort in the goal square. Mark Thompson takes possession of the ball. Gets it out wide. Werner's under pressure. Under enormous pressure. Attempted kick off the ground by Seo. A kick off the ground by Somerville. Goes wide. Here's a chance now for Todd Viney. And he goals. Has been taken out there by Jay Viney. He gets the hand pass off to Road. Road steady. Long kick by Road up towards half forward. Seau with 12 and a half minutes left in the game. The hand pass goes wide. Manning 
Manning kicks it out towards the centre wing. Danaher can't mark. O'Donnell close to the centre circle. Crashing his way through was Beveridge. Gets the hand pass off. Kick up towards half forward by Connolly. The mark taken by Thompson. Thompson's kick up towards the centre wing. Andrebus bounces the ball. It doesn't quite come back to him, but he's able to recover. The left foot kick in towards the pocket. O'Brien tries to tap it onto the advantage of Terry Danaher, but crashing his way through with Steins, and he takes the ball over the boundary line for a throw in. About 40 metres around from the Essendon goal. As I said, Melbourne will be the Fosters Cup champions for 1989. They're leading well. About 10 minutes left. Todd Viney gets the hand pass over the top in the direction of Danny Seau. He throws himself on the ball. Newport gathers pretty well. Gets the hand pass back to Beveridge, who's played pretty well. Beveridge's kick. Lovell takes the mark between centre wing and half forward, slightly favouring the Demons. Took a bit of courage to hold his ground there because some of all the big six foot six ruckman was bearing down on the Melbourne Rover. Lovell, a right centre wing for Melbourne. Drop punt will land inside 50, almost a mark to CO. Manning, he can get clear. Around one, around two. Has to get the hand pass back to Thompson. Thompson's kick up towards the half back line. And that might have almost been in the back against Kieran Spawn, but it will be a bounce, according to umpire Brian Sheehan. About 65 metres from goal. So 10 minutes and 48 seconds left in this match. Knocked down by Somerville. O'Donnell, a short kick to centre wing. And reading it well as Chris Danaher off the hands of the pack. Essendon badly needing a score to even add respectability to their total. Oh, oh Atropus breaks one tackle and almost copped another one. Walsh got one too high. And Kevin Walsh, one of the veterans in the Essendon lineup, takes the free kick, plays on pretty quickly, and almost a 50 metre penalty to O'Brien. But he is nonetheless within scoring distance. O'Brien about 40 metres out, or he will be when he kicks. Has the opportunity to bring up Essendon's fifth goal. They trail at the moment 4-9 to 10-10. What's the goal umpire say? Only one behind. So it's not the Bombers day or night, whichever you'd prefer. Wherever you might be. That's right, far and wide. Their telecast not only going live to Britain, but also to a number of states in Australia. Last game of VFL football, as I said before. Jimmy Steins at the Australian Football League next year. Plenty will be happening off the field between now and then as O'Brien picks up the ball on right centre wing for Essendon. Underneath it as well, should be able to mark. Good knock away by Barney. Uh, Marnie, picked up by Jay Viney, who hooks the ball back towards centre field. Johnston oh, gets a, a very bad bounce. Beveridge, one of Melbourne's best players actually, Luke, Be uh, Luke Beveridge. As the kick comes up towards the centre wing position. Kept into play, I think, yes, by Steve Newport. And Wallace just a little bit late arriving on the scene. Danny Seo sees the ball over the boundary line. It will be a throw-in. Nine minutes left in the game. And Melbourne, only having 20 fit players, have done a tremendous job here in this match. And they will certainly run out winners. Somerville gets the ball down. Kicks it up towards half-forward. At the back, Marnie tries to tap it over to Steins. It's successful. Demons get clear. Phoebe under pressure. But he goes after it again. Can't quite control it. Newport in there to help out. Matthew Phoebe gets it back. Gets the hand pass to Rhodes. Rhodes little left foot chip is good play. Andy Lovell at centre half forward. Hand pass to Jay Viney. Into an open goal goes Jay Viney. And another one on the board for Melbourne. And they run away. So Jay Viney putting through a sealer if there was in fact one needed. Only seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this game. Somebody souvenired the football. The Tommy Sharon. And another one being brought out by the boundary umpires. North on president, Trevor Coop, on screen. Looks as though, uh, looking at him, you'd think that Hawthorne was losing, but uh, not the case. And it was a spectator here today. Hawthorne, of course, losing their match in uh, Miami to the Bombers by 14 points. And a very physical affair it was, too. So no time on, 7 minutes and 10 seconds left. It didn't help Essendon's cause, although I don't think it's going to matter much now. Somerville. Ball tapped down to Wallace, who got one a little bit too high. The advantage well played. Wallace steams forward. Long kick by Dean Wallace up to the bomber forward line, which hasn't functioned at all well today. Kieran Spawn. Assistance from Antrobus. 
Back to Michael Long. Haven't seen too much of him today. Bailey got rid of him with a good hip and shoulder. Keogh loses out. Long on the bottom. Picked up by Walsh. Good strong start from the Essendon defender. Down there in attack at the moment. Antrobus around road. On to Kieran Spawn. Just on 50. And O'Brien, has he put one through? I think he has. It's a wobbly kick, but nonetheless effective for a goal. Well, they all count, and it was little O'Brien on that occasion. The big men flew in the goal square. Nobody could control the ball, and what happens? The ball usually does spill when such a pack does fly. There's the high ball, and it's O'Brien who positions himself well in front of the pack there then, found the gap, a little bit like a soccer kick on that occasion. Although he didn't kick it off the ground, he dribbled along the ground, but they all count. His first goal, Craig O'Brien. 5-10 to 11-10. O'Brien's first, and with only six minutes, or in fact less than six minutes, left in the Foster's Cup. Jay Vi uh, Todd Viney it is, boots Melbourne forward up towards the left half forward flank. Underneath it is Werner. Backup support there from Paul Vanderhaar, who has had a fairly quiet final game. And up by Sporton indicating it's out of bounds on the full. And it will be a free kick to be taken on the gasometer centre wing. Uh, Jay Viney picks up the ball. Or is it Todd? No, it's Jay. He will take the free for the Demons on the centre wing in front of the gasometer. Viney to kick the ball up to within goal scoring distance for Melbourne. Up towards his full forward position. Punched away by Wallace. Attempted kick off the ground. Gathers about 30 metres for the Essendon side. And it's about 65 to 70 metres around from the Melbourne goal. Boundary throw in. 11-10 to 5-10. It's 36 points the difference in favour of Melbourne. And what a wonderful effort by the Demons. With an undermanned side, they've come here to the Oval to win this Foster's Cup final. A kick towards half forward, punched away by Todd Viney, and it goes out for another boundary throw in, in front of young Hawkins. Just under five minutes left in this last quarter, and Melbourne doing it pretty well. Jimmy Steins is captain the side, doing the ruck work against young Somerville. The kick towards the wing, and there's a good mark by Marnie. Has it been paid to Marnie? Yes. A big jump by the young Stoney Marks over the top of Walsh. And who would have thought, and Jimmy wouldn't have thought, five years ago when he left Irish Shores that he'd be standing here at the Oval captaining a world champion side. Too true. Beveridge. Seow. Seow goes for goal. Mark to Bennett. Has it travelled far enough? Yes, says the umpire. And Bennett takes the mark. Opportunity to kick his fifth. He's only 15, maybe 18 metres out directly in front. And Melbourne really Don have dominated this match since the opening bounce and again CEO figuring in that and Bennett should not miss this one Bennett concentrating very hard big drop punt kick by Darren Bennett and he bangs it straight through the centre that's his fifth with so many features it's embarrassing Darren Bennett kicking his fifth goal, three minutes and ten seconds remaining in the Foster's Cup from the Oval in London. Chris Danaher, a hand pass taken by Manning, tackled by Keogh. Let's see who can get it out of the centre. Is it uh, Joe, Todd Viney? O'Donnell? Antrobus? And only sees it go to Peter Rode. This kick bounces wide and indeed further wide. White. This is Kieran Spawn. It back to the centre, very wide wings here at the Oval. Steve Newport, almost caught with it. Wallace overruns it. Chris Danaher for Essendon. Awkward looking pass, tries to find his brother, nearly yorked him. I don't think he would have appreciated that too much in the kick, or well, the mark taken by O'Donnell. Onto Antrobus. Michael, just about Essendon's best player. Haven't had too many. A shot at goal is long and fairly accurate, I would think. The goal umpire says yes. Well, great play there by Tony Andrebus. He uh, assessed the situation pretty well. Perhaps wouldn't have got anywhere near kicking a goal if he'd have taken it from where he took the pass from. Running on, gathered about 15 metres and put it, uh, well, not straight through the centre. I would suggest that it was a pretty close decision Line by ball, the goal umpire. Yes. yes, and helped out by the field umpire, indicating full points. So Tony Andrebus, his first for the afternoon. As we have less than two minutes remaining in this Foster's Cup. Steins ridden into the ground by Somerville. And the big Irishman will take the free kick for Melbourne. The lowest of the Melbourne jumpers out on the field today, number 11. Big heart, Jimmy Steins. This fellow's going to be a player. Very impressed with Marty. And that, in fact, is the siren. 
a little bit earlier than I would have thought on my watch, but nonetheless, a convincing win to Melbourne, and they've won the Foster's Cup for 1989, convincingly defeating Essendon. Let's check the final scores. It's Melbourne, 12 goals, 10, 82. You better write it down, Ian. They're taking it off to five goals, or six, six goals, 10, ten 46. Mind you, they were quick. Yes, you, <laughs> you didn't have much of an opportunity there, Pete, but uh, Melbourne, fantastic effort by the Demons. They played pretty well in uh, Toronto to beat Geelong, and they had about four or five reserves over there. And when I say reserves, I mean players to pick from. They came here to the Oval, to combat the Bombers who had been meritorious in their victory over Hawthorne in Miami. And when Melbourne went to the selection table, they only had 20 fit players. And I wouldn't even think they had 20 fit players because at one stage I noticed it, at a training run that Danny Seo could have been injured. But uh, a great victory to Melbourne in this Foster's Cup final by six goals. And the final scores here at the Oval, Melbourne 12-10-82, defeating Essendon 6-10-46, we'll take a break. We stand by now for the presentation and Melbourne already celebrating with the appropriate article. 12-10-82 with the final score at Melbourne, defeating Essendon 6-10-46. Bennett finished up with five, and I think we said five straight in, didn't we, for Melbourne? Yes, on my scorecard, Petey's kicked five straight. Uh, Jackson got two, and there were singles kicked by Todd Viney, Jay Viney, Co, Beveridge and Hawkins. And for Essendon, Kieran Sporn finished up with two singles to Antrobus, Buick, Wallace and O'Brien. Convincing win by Melbourne. Once again, they went into the match, I dare say, as underdogs, but as has been the case right throughout the season, Ian, underdogs doesn't matter for Melbourne. A good team effort. Oh, they're tremendous. And you can see uh, all the players and officials uh, down there really enjoying the festive moment for the Demons. They've capped off a pretty good season. They were a little disappointing in the finals. Uh, going in against Geelong and being beaten rather miserably. But uh, they came over here with a mission, I guess, and uh, they're pretty well led. I think Stuart Spencer at the top, uh, John Sell, their team manager, and in particular their coach, John Northey. I know that uh, he's a quiet achiever, John Northey. He goes about his business in, um, in a very, very uh, sober way, and I'm certain that he gets through to those players because they're a very, very committed unit they knew that they had the job in front of them. Essendon obviously having a lot more of their senior players available to pick from. And I would think more than 20 fit players as against the Demons who were right down to the bare 20. Down on the ground, Mike Williamson is going to make the presentation. Microphone, Mr. Michael Foster, the managing director of Courage Limited to present the aforementioned Foster's World Cup. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for supporting us once again for Aussie Rules at the Foster's Oval. It's the fourth time we've done it. We enjoy it, we hope you enjoy it, and certainly we'll be doing it again next year. So now it's my pleasure to present the Foster's Cup to Jim Staines of Melbourne. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Jim, you're not going to get away as easily as that. What a record. Twice you've captured Melbourne, and twice you've won. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, I'd just like to say a few words for, I'm sure, all the people who travelled with us, and uh, all the people back home, our dear friends, wives, friends, all the Melbourne Football Club supporters. I'm sure that they'll agree that with all these young kids that we played today, that they were real proud, and all the players who played, I want to tell you, I'm proud. And, it's just a great feeling to win, and without those young kids that went out today and gave everything they had, we wouldn't have won this cup. On a personal note, your, your parents and your family must be enormously proud of you because they have come across from Ireland for the final of the Foster's World Cup, haven't they? Yeah, that's right, yeah. I'm a little brother and sister and the parents there, they're all here. Yeah, it's good, it's a bit of encouragement. You no, know, it's great, especially when you win. Jim, was it a very tough match? Very hard to play in the windy conditions, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I think it was to our advantage because, you know, they, they had a good side out there. They're a skillful team. But their guys just went in there and just kept getting their bodies in and playing it hard. And as a result, they just made mistakes and we just took over. Is it harder than you actually anticipated? Um, no, I thought, it was yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot harder. Uh, you know, I think our guys prepared a little bit better than they did and that's probably why. Well, Jim, a magnificent record, as I said. Twice captain of Melbourne. Twice... You've led them to victory and now you've got the Foster's World Cup. God bless you and our congratulations from everybody here at the Foster's Oval and of course the people at home in Australia. 
so thanks, and thanks to Essendon as well for a great game. Yes, well, you can't leave in the kicks 135 to 120 hand passes. They certain, they dominated the game in the second half in particular. They set it up 4 6 to 2 2 at half time, but from there on it was really a procession. And I think that they just used the ball a little better. The statistics uh, slightly lower than in a normal game because uh, they were 20 minute quarters in the first half and 25 minute quarters in the second half with no time on. Melbourne far more effective and using the ball a heck of a lot better than Essendon. Essendon really not adapting to the conditions when we had, for most of the day, a very strong wind blowing straight across the ground. The Demons meritorious in their victory and a lot of their efforts were due to great teamwork, Peter. I thought that... Uh, I thought their smaller players did well, Ian. Yes, uh, most definitely, but uh, they were never really one out. That was what the thing that impressed me was that the fact that they all made efforts to get to where their teammates were with tackles, backing up, their hand passes and their kicking far more effective. OK, that's it from up here. Let's go downstairs now to our interview position and Don Scott has with him Danny Sia. Player who was under a cloud but obviously very joyous, Danny, after what a great win. Yeah, it was a fantastic win. Um, a lot of the guys were very sore after the game in Toronto because of the hard service, the AstroTurf and everything. And Everyone seemed to come up really well. Unfortunately, Stephen O'Dwyer couldn't play because he hurt his leg very badly. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to play or not, but he came up all right with a bit of strapping and that, so... Now, that's the ankle. You, you twisted the ankle? Yeah, they thought I broke it, actually. I mean, but, man. Um, I still might think Mum. there's a crack in it, but it seems to go all right now. Now, what about you? You've had a really checkered career. You came over to Ireland as a junior, you played college football, and now you're playing VFL football again. What do you prefer, the, the gridiron, the Gaelic, or the Australian rules? Well, it's very different. Um, it's a toss-up between the American football and Australian rules football. I probably like the Australian rules football more because of the open spacing. You don't have to wear all that padding, and you don't have to worry about as much, and you have to be a lot aerobically fit. But the American football has got a lot of better training. The facilities are a lot better, and it seems that they seem to train every day, and it seems to come out when they play us the training with us could be a little bit better, I think. Yeah, I did not appreciate gridiron or college football. It attracts crowds as big as our v VFL football back home. Yeah, um, the college is a big following, just as much as the pro. I mean, they've got the highlights, they've got everything. With the, They're always in the Sports Illustrated. The players are always getting big write-ups, just as big as the professionals over in America. And the college crowds, well, they always have a lot of people who uh, used to go to the college, and the college means a lot more to the people than the professional teams, because they um, can relate to something. They can relate to ex-footballers, they can relate to people, and they've got a lot of friends there, so that's why they all go. Well, let's hope you put in a big pre-season, Danny, because you, there's a real niche in that Melbourne side, and uh, if you perform as you did today, I certainly think you'll be a credit to the side next year. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Don. <laughs>